Boruto Chapter 1 Review. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to put up a warning. This manga is not drawn by Kishimoto. Now, I think everybody knows this because it takes half the... If you don't know this, you're an idiot because the art is terrible. I'm going to be the first one to say it. When, when we first saw Boruto going near Hinata, going like passing by Hinata and, and the head in the towel, I didn't recognize her. I literally, I actually had a hard time buying that with Hinata. And that's not what bothered me about the art. But no, what annoyed me the most was the fact was how terrible the design for Sake and Sakura were. But I look at it as Hinata, you can kind of excuse it by saying Hinata doesn't have as much reference material. Like, even though you worked for Kishimoto for years because you were his assistant, that still doesn't matter. What pisses me off about it is that the two other main characters who Sakura pro probably had more screen time than Sasuke now that I think about it because he was shown so rarely for a good portion of Shippuden. But, but that's beside the point. They both have so many panels and so many things you can reference through the design. The fact that Sasuke looks that different is not a different art style. He actually looks like a different person, and that annoys me. Sakura just looks well. Her head looks like a water thing. Her head looks like an apple or something. It's actually really weird, the shape of the head. It's actually all the women in this manga. They all have really weird shaped heads, and it's actually kind of creepy. The only characters that are drawn well, in my opinion, and I'm going to get some flack for this probably, are Boruto and Naruto, and that's the only some of the time. However, in the very beginning when Boruto was fighting that guy, uh, that was good art. That actually did look really good. But this is where I, what I'm going to talk about to the rest of the review. Because honestly, the rest is just recapping the Boruto movie. So yeah, let's just talk about, you know, the new content we got, which was only like three pages. So Boruto is fighting this guy on a, on a destroyed Okage mountain. He appears to know him. I think his name is Kawaki or something. I don't know. That I thought I thought I was said Kawaii at first, and I was almost laughed, laughed. Up, but then I noticed it wasn't, that wasn't what it was. But he's fighting the guy. The guy said something, and this is where things get interesting. He said, "Would you like to join the seventh or something?" Implying that he Naruto is dead, and the way he words it, it sounds like he killed him. And this guy is like Boruto days. Now Boruto is older in this, but I do not buy for a single damn minute some like, what, 16 year old is killing Naruto, I don't buy that. But if Naruto is dead, I'll just go off of a limb and say he is dead. I hate to say it, I think Sasuke and Sasuke are probably dead, definitely Sasuke. Because there's only like five people that Sasuke gets a single damn about. So when you kill Naruto, he's probably going to go after the guy. Now, a lot of people are theorizing Naruto died protecting Boruto. That is possible, but I just, I don't know how the kid could kill him. Like, I legitimately do not see what this kind of power this kid could produce. That if Naruto was 100% seriously fighting him, he couldn't just guard and protect Boruto and survive. I, I just don't understand it, but I do want to point out that but if you look at the Hidden Leaf and you look at the village, it doesn't look like a Jitsu did that. And the reason I say that is because the way he said the age of the ninja is over, and we've been seeing all these like new advancements and technology, it looks like some kind of weapon did it. And I don't mean like a chopper weapon, I mean like a bomb. It looks like some highly advanced weapon did it. And I guess, I think Kishimoto said he doesn't put guns in the series at one point, because it would be so, um, it wouldn't be fair. Now, I do want to point out, this was way before Demigod, Naruto, and Sasuke. Let's be honest, the gun isn't killing these guys. Or, or Sakura, actually, because regeneration, but whatever. The point, though, is that the villains look like it was destroyed by a weapon, so maybe they made, like, a bomb or something, and it just killed Naruto? I mean, I, I can barely see that happening, considering he's blocked a tail beast bombs before. And he stopped the Indra's arrow from Sasuke, which, in my opinion, could have leveled the entire valley at the end. The point, though, 
is that all we got out of this chapter was really that the Hidden Leaf had been destroyed and Naruto was possibly dead. Now, I'm going to give a list of like people that I think could be important that I think could be alive. So, I don't think if Naruto is truly dead, I would think Doc is like a 50-50% chance of being alive. I'm pretty sure if Doc is dead, if Doc is dead, Doc is definitely alive. Then we're going to need some a former. I assume the best way to give an expedition would be through a former main character. And I can see how and Sakura is a better option for that than Sake because it's pretty clear the reason they if Naruto is dead in at the very start of the manga, the reason is clear. He's too powerful. Him and Sake are too powerful. Sakura is powerful, but she's not like so so powerful to the point of Nar like Naruto and Sake where they can just stop the plot from progressing. That's a major problem that Kishimoto had. Like look at Guidance. He had to nerf Naruto and Sake just to make Sakura do something cool. He literally had to make them look weaker just because he made them too powerful. Like, he had to make them weak. And then the Boruto movies are certainly strong again. And the Naruto to last. Naruto can barely beat Toneri when Toneri is clearly nowhere near Sake level in my opinion. At least the level he was at during the war. The point is that he has to make the power scaling work for that point. And... Looking at it logically, can you really tell me that it would be a good idea to have Naruto and Sasuke in this story? Really? Boruto has even said it's, this is his story. He said it in the in like the introduction he gets. It's his story, and it wouldn't it make sense to have Naruto or Sasuke alive because they, they can pretty much beat anything. So, I'm assuming Naruto and Sasuke are dead. Sakura, I would say, like a 50% chance of being alive. Hinata or Himawari is dead. Because you see Boruto has a scar over his eye like Akashi. And I would assume the Byakugan is under there. I don't know if that would, if, the, if it really was under there or not, but I'm like 99.9% .9 sure the Byakugan is under there. But we know he doesn't have it. We see it in the Boruto movie and in this manga. He did not have it when he was younger. So the only logical explanation for it, of course, would be that Either Hinata or Himawari died and gave it to him, and gave them the eye. Gave Boruto the eye. Well, then again, there are hundreds of Hugas, but you, it would be more impactful and better from a storytelling perspective to give, like, or maybe Hinata to give him the Byakugan or Himawari. I don't think Himawari is dead, though, because he's a new character. But I will say, if Sakura is dead, I guarantee Kakashi is alive. In fact, even if no. Even if Sake and Sakura are both alive, Kakashi is still going to be alive. Because Kakashi is just... He seems like a character that in this story will be used mainly for expedition. So that, those are my thoughts on like but important characters that are... You know, that matter at this point. Or the characters that we really care about. But yeah, um, as for the chapter, if I had to rate it, I'm going to get some flack for this. Like some serious flack. But before I say it, I just want to say I have seen the Boruto movie. I will link my review for that down in the description. I hope, go watch that. It's like an hour long. It's long. But if you want to know my thoughts on the whole Boruto story, watch that. I will not be talking about the Boruto movie parts in this manga unless they are different. I'm not doing that. That's a waste of my time. But Because in my opinion, this is a waste of people's time. They should just skip straight to the new content. But I understand why they don't. They need to tell the Boruto story in a manga form so they can have the complete story in the manga. I understand it. I don't agree with it. But they have to do it. But it takes away from my enjoyment. So, from my enjoyment, like when I talk about how much I enjoyed it, I would give it all I gave some take for this. But just to the fact that I was, it was reading Naruto like again, I would say, oh, I'm going to take I would say like a 3 out of 5. Just because the only things that I really enjoyed were like 4 pages. And then there were like 50 more. That were I was just kind of glancing over. I guarantee you if that had not been a Boruto recap. Uh, that live reaction would be like an hour long. But it's actually only 20 something minutes. And that annoyed me. It should be way longer but it's not. But from a critical perspective. Judging on just... I would say the same, just the art is really bad, that's the problem. The art, if the art was like Kishimoto's level, I wouldn't mind seeing it in manga form. 
I would actually really like to see Boruto in manga form through Kishi, through like Kishimoto's kind of art style, but this, I mean, Sasuke, his, his face, what in the hell is wrong with Sasuke's face? He looks like he died and came back from the dead in the zombie. <laughs> really, the art, is, the art is, isn't good in my opinion. I always really enjoy it, but I'll, I'll try to get used to it. So yeah, straight out of five. But I hope you guys enjoyed my review with the Boruto chapter one. I'll do all I will be reviewing and reacting to all of these chapters because you never know. They could change nothing from the movie. Maybe the main villain won't be Momoshiki. Maybe that kid, the Boruto is fighting, Kawaki or whatever his name is, is uh, the villain that will appear later on. I don't know. So I'll react to all of them and review them. I do want to point out this is a monthly manga theory. It is monthly. This is not like Naruto previously where it came out every week. This will come out once a month. And it will not come out on Mondays and Tuesdays. That doesn't make sense. Because the chapter... Pro I guess it could, actually. It, it will either come out on, like, Mondays or Thursdays. I'm leaning towards Thursdays. And we'll just drop with everything else. Yeah, I know Attack on Titan is a monthly manga. Well, seasonal. But and in your, but it dropped with everything else. It dropped with, like, One Piece and stuff. I think we were just really lucky this week to get the chapters early because of the holiday in Japan. But yeah, so I'll see you guys next month to talk about this. I may do a couple of discussion videos about this. If I can really find something to talk about. I talked about it all here, but yeah. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation signing out. Have a great day.